I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issues are booster shots, vaccines for kids, and mask mandates. We talk with Dr. Mark Gallant, the California Secretary of Health and Human Services, and the COVID-19 shot administrator for the governor. Plus, Carla Maranucci is back with us as she steps back from California political journalism after 40 years. And... Could you please answer the question? Again, I see why your wife left you. We talk to the comedians behind The Supporters, a new docu-comedy that spoofs real-life politicians. The issue is, starts right now. Broadcasting across California, California's only statewide political show. You're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. Lots of news on the COVID-19 front this week. Kids ages 5 to 11 could be receiving the COVID-19 vaccine as early as next week. It's likely that vaccine will be mandated for in-person students in California by the middle of next year. Also this week, Governor Newsom received his booster shot and showed off the guns. Right there by his side, administering the shot and serving as hype man, is California Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Mark Galley. Dr. Galley, welcome back to The Issue Is. Hey, thanks, Alex, for having me. Great to be back with you. Uh, before I get to the serious questions, what did you think of the governor's flex? <laughs> I mean, that's why I applauded, not because he got the shot, because of the flex. I mean, quite a move. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let's talk uh, about kids from ages 5 to 11 getting vaccinated. The L.A. Times put out an editorial wondering if we should really be mandating this. Let's put this up on the screen. They say that COVID cases are way down right now. There's still some questions about how the vaccine could impact kids long term when it comes to expansion of the heart. In addition to being health secretary, you're a father and you're a pediatrician. What do you say to parents who say, I don't feel comfortable with my kid getting vaccinated. Why can't I, as a parent, make that choice? First, as a pediatrician, I often say, well, let's talk about it. Let's answer the questions that you might have about this vaccine or any other vaccine or any treatment, frankly. So we want to make sure people have the information to move forward with confidence. So the idea that COVID has actually been the eighth uh, worst killer of young people, kids uh, in our country this last year, uh, and every preventable child death should be uh, uh, sort of aggressively pursued. So it would not be mandated for California students until it gets full FDA approval. But, but still, to that point, why not make it a choice? Why does it have to be mandated? Well, we have uh, we have a number of vaccines that aren't a choice either to go to school that they're required and COVID uh, and the infection that the COVID virus causes is a severe one. It's transmissible in the air. It can be easily transmitted in, in schools. And so making sure that the school environment is safe and secure for kids, all kids to learn, is an uh, obligation we hold strongly. And we've been doing that this year. We see all the uh, beautiful artwork behind you from your kids. Uh, are your kids going to get vaccinated? Yeah, I mean, uh, as soon as it's made available, we've made the decision. We've talked about it, my wife and I. Uh, many of you know her. We've sat down and talked about the data, the information, and feel it's the right choice for them. His wife, by the way, is Dr. Christina Galley, who's one of the leaders at L.A. County Health. Uh, let, let's talk about booster shots. You got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine originally. So did the governor. This the week, both of you got a Moderna booster. We know you can mix and match vaccines. But if the viewer watching this got J&J &J like you did, does the science show that it's better to mix and match? Well, I'm not sure that it shows that it's better, but certainly mixing and matching is not a new concept. We do that with a lot of vaccines already. Frankly, we often don't know the manufacturer of the vaccine that we're receiving. What we do know is what it's preventing in terms of the infections that we give it. For me, the decision was really based on uh, use different modalities, really challenge my immune system to boost it up significantly so I feel as secure as I can be out in, out in the community at the events that I get, have the privilege of going to, and then, of course, over the holidays. Big picture question. How are we doing overall in terms of vaccinations in California? Where are we at? I mean, we're, we're doing really well. We're a uh, top 10 state, the biggest state uh, in that top 10 uh, uh, you know, almost at 86 or 87 percent of eligible Californians getting one 
at least one dose, if not fully vaccinated, really prepared for what's coming with the five to 11 year old approval that uh, could be here as soon as next week. 4,000 sites across the state ready for that. That's an astounding number, 86%. And, and you guys deserve a lot of credit for that. I know when we first started this conversation months and months and months ago, it was like, let's get to 70% and we'll be at herd immunity. We're way past that as a state. So if most people now are vaccinated and soon kids can get vaccinated too, and the rate of cases is so low in California, why can't we start lifting the mask mandates in this state? As we slowly but surely move into this really exciting holiday season where it gets a little colder, people gather indoors, Halloween's coming up, and then we go right into Thanksgiving and other winter holidays, keeping some of the really well-proven protective mitigating strategies like keeping masks on in certain settings is something that's going to be important for the next couple of months. And then, as we always have been, reevaluate, look at the data, and do what we can to make sure that the benefits of vaccine, the strength of this incredible miracle uh, to protect our, our state, um, really uh, pays off for Californians and when we can safely lift masks in in schools or other settings, uh, we intend to. But last winter season, our, our vaccination rate was close to zero. <laughs> now we're at 86%. I mean, isn't there a difference because of that? Isn't the proof that the vaccines work mean that we can start removing some of these things? Well, and absolutely. And, and I mean, one very important message is these vaccines have been tremendous. But also a year ago, we weren't nearly as open as a state. A lot of people were staying home. Most kids weren't in schools. People were prepared to heed a different sort of holiday season message than we are this year. And we weren't dealing with certain variants that we know are just more transmissible and land some people in the hospital a little sooner than the earlier forms of COVID. This is such a serious conversation. We do want to have a little bit of fun here at the end. Um, so last week, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, but we want to show you some video of Andrew Yang was on our show in studio. And we were playing basketball together. He was on our set showing off our basketball, his basketball skills. Little did we know at that exact moment, you and Governor Newsom happened to be on a basketball court as well, and you released this TikTok to promote people getting the flu vaccine. Take a look. Just me and my twin in them. Yeah, that's my twin in them. Oh, best friend. We killing them. No new no friends. Get rid of them. Yet another flex. Uh, so how does, <laughs> how does your game compare with the governor's game? Who, who's better on the court? No, you're trying to get me fired here? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I will just say the governor's shot looked great. I mean, his follow through his form, he was even, he had a nice fadeaway. I mean, it was pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, you know, but I would say probably my finger roll uh, and, and my layup looked good. And, uh, you know, I have an inch on him, so I'm not sure how we would do one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, but probably another time we'll have a chance to do that. And. Anytime you want me on the set to shoot a little bit, I'd love to come. I was about to say, open invite to join us in studio. I mean, we don't get to see your kids' beautiful artwork, but we would get to see your beautiful finger roll, uh, Dr. There Gally. We go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it, and uh, hope we'll see you here soon. Yeah, no, thank you very, very much. Take care. All right. Up next, Carla Marinucci is stepping back after 40 years in California political journalism. We've got some special surprises planned for her next. Now, we know Carla's quite the dancer, but it's tough to compete with the dance moves of Virginia's candidate for governor, Terry McAuliffe. Take it away. Carla Marinucci is here for the first time. She is the that was Carla Marinucci's first appearance on The Issue Is back in 2019. Since the pandemic began, she's been on our show more than any other guest. Why? Because she's the top political reporter in the state. For years, she's written California's Politico playbook. And everyone who's anyone in the state politics has read her words religiously every day. This week, she wrote her final playbook, and announced she's going on a sabbatical for six months and leaving Daily Political News in California after 40 years. Carla Marnucci, 
Welcome back to The Issue Is. And this week, the issue is you. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I so, so why are you leaving? Uh, look, after 40 years, uh, it's time to uh, explore some new stories like the wine in Bordeaux. <laughs> in other places. Alex, look, uh, California, covering California is the best. You know that. It is a drama. It is a roller coaster ride for you. Literally a roller coaster ride with the governor. Uh, no place else can you do that. Uh, but now I, I want to try doing that in other parts of the world. And uh, so that's what we're going to do for a couple of months, at least a couple of months. I plan on you know coming back to Politico and doing some projects in 2022. Uh, but right now, boy, I'm, I'm looking forward to this uh, new adventure. And you're going to France, right? Going to France and Spain and uh, the EU will be trolling all over the place there. So that that's my uh, that's my plan. Yeah. So uh, the biggest story of this year in California politics was the recall effort against Governor Newsom. Uh, but one of the biggest stories you've ever covered was the recall of Gray Davis back in 2003, which brought with it this political force named Arnold Schwarzenegger. Talk about what that experience was like and how unique Arnold was as a force in terms of this state. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger provided the kind of Hollywood moments in politics that you're just not going to get in another state. I remember uh, on his election night uh, during that 2003 recall, as he was taking the stage to make his acceptance speech, he came over to me on the side of the stage and just said, only in America, only in America. And that is Arnold Schwarzenegger. That is his story. I mean, there were moments covering him that were right out of the movies. I remember going to a, a big physical fitness conference with him. He's a star. He's an icon with that crowd. As we entered the arena with thousands of people screaming his name, I was right behind him. He turned to me and he said, don't worry, I will protect you. And I thought, what, what other governor cites, uh, you know, script from the Terminator movies? I mean, this is what he did. Carla, you have so many great stories. Uh, we can't fit it all into the TV broadcast, but if people want to hear more of them, and it's totally worth doing that, go to youtube.com slash Alex Michelson or the Issue Is podcast to hear more behind the scenes stories from Carla. Part of the reason that we're limited on time for the TV broadcast is, Carla, we've got a few surprises for you. Uh, we know you are so beloved in the California press corps. I reached out to some of our friends who are all issue as regular panelists to share their thoughts. Let's begin with your co-editor of the California Politico playbook, Jeremy White. Carla, it's been an honor being your co-pilot these last few years and a joy learning that you're not just an amazing reporter, you are a wonderful human being. Good luck with what's next and I will always do my best to do justice to the amazing newsletter you built. Hey, it's John Myers from the Los Angeles Times. I, I can't talk. I'm desperately trying to beat Carla Maranucci. Oh, she beat me again on another scoop. Congrats, Carla. We'll miss you. Hey, Carla. <laughs> it's your friend Laurel Rosenhall from Cal Matters. I am so happy for you. You're such an inspiring journalist, and I cannot wait to see what you do next. Cheers. Hi, Carla. It's Doug Sovereign from KCBS Radio in San Francisco. I can't believe this is happening. I'm going to miss you so much. There's never been anyone else like you. You're the bravest. You're the best. You're just in a league of your own. Bon voyage, mon ami. Mwah. Hi, I'm Melanie Mason with the Los Angeles Times, and I know a lot of journalists. But believe me, none of us are a match for Carla's hustle, her smarts, and her sense of fun. Carla, congratulations and thank you. You earned the sabbatical. I'm Jessica Levinson. Carla, you are absolutely the gold standard when it comes to journalists and people. This is a better state because of you. I'm a better person because of you. Wishing you absolutely the best of the best. Hi, I'm Sima Mehta from the LA Times. Carla, you've been such a role model and such a trailblazer, and more importantly, you've been such a good friend for so long. Um, I admire the hell out of you, but I'm also so relieved that I'm not going to have to worry about you beating me for the next several months. Have an amazing sabbatical. Joe Garofoli, San Francisco Chronicle. Carla, to my friend, my paisan, my co-creator of Shaky Hands Productions, you have inspired me and multiple generations of California journalists. Congratulations on your next step. I toast you with a glass of homemade limoncello, aguri. The bottle's coming your way. What do you think? Wow, Alex, you have, I, I'm, I'm in tears. That is, that's just such, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much, but you know, this is about you, too. I think, you know, you you represent um, a, a whole new generation of journalists that I think 
are taking it up and just just killing it. Uh, that that's what it's all about. Well, uh, it, you know, California is a place to be. It, and it, um, yeah, well, it's not about me. It's about you today. <laughs> Enjoy the moment. And and I'm not done yet. I've got even bigger surprises still to come, if that's possible. But let's go to break with your past dancing when you were on with Doug so Sovereign and we played Shaka Khan. Stevie Wonder. We are back with Politico's Carla Marnucci, who is stepping back from daily California political journalism after 40 years and going on a sabbatical, including heading to France. All right, Carla, we have more surprises for you. I reached out to an Issue Is viewer here in Southern California, and he sent us this. See, Lulu and I, Carla, we are very upset because you're taking a sabbatical. I mean, what the hell is this all about? Let me ask you that. I mean, don't fix what is not broken. This was perfect. It's the perfect job. It did the perfect work. I mean, your writing is fantastic. This is where I get my political news. So why would you do that? In any case, I wish you good luck on your sabbatical. And what I like about it is that they call it a sabbatical because that means that you have to say, I'll be back. Have a great day. Bye-bye, Carla. What do you think of that? Oh, my God. I can't, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. That is, that is priceless. That is yeah. priceless. And so him, right? And <laughs> and then, so him. Yeah. So he's not the only issue is viewer who sent in regards. Here's an issue is viewer I reached out to in Northern California. Hey, Carla, it's Gavin Newsom. Not that you need I need to introduce myself to you since you've tracked me. You've known my movements for over, a, well, probably two decades now, which is just extraordinary. One of the things that I think defines you, separates the work you do from, respectfully, many others, is there's no malice. Um, you're going to get the story. You're going to be dogged. You, you know, wherever it leads, um, you're going to follow. And, uh, and, and you're going to hold us to account. And, and that's a good thing. Uh, but there's no malice. Uh, there's no edge. And I just hope other younger reporters out there pay a little more attention to your approach to journalism, uh, to how you approach excellence uh, and truth seeking and accountability, uh, because they all need to learn a little bit from you. And I say that a little selfishly, because uh, I hate to see you take any time off even the short sabbatical. I'll see you again. We'll all see you again soon, I'm sure. But, but I hope other journalists out there, um, you know, pause and just reflect that the world needs more Carla Marinucci's. Wow. Mm. Oh. <laughs> ah, I, I'm, I'm speechless. I, <laughs> I think, um, you know, I have to say, hearing, hearing from uh, Governor Newsom and hearing from uh, Schwar Governor Schwarzenegger and Mike colleagues uh we're competitors we're hard competitors i'm a competitor with you alex mm -hmm. but i think uh i think we all understand that uh civility and just you know joy in the job is what's really important and i think you bring that i think i think uh i think this whole group of folks in california is special because we all bring that to the job well i i love you and and i hope you're feeling the love uh today because you deserve it and after all the appearances you've been on, first time you ever were speechless on this show, so that's something. Uh, so <laughs> let's end with music, right? So we're gonna play Pharrell's Feeling Brand New, which is how you're gonna be feeling in France. Bon, bon voyage, Carla. We love you. Let's dance it out as we uh, head to break. <laughs> The comedy duo The Good Liars are back with another Borat-style docu-comedy. Their target? The 2020 presidential campaign. Welcome to the Derek and Dale Show. I'm Derek. And I'm Dale. Derek and Dale are fictional characters having very real interactions with political figures during the 2020 presidential campaign. The best is yet to come! Yeah! Including Donald Trump Jr.'s girlfriend, Kimberly Guilfoyle. 
In the comedic documentary, The Supporters, they play Trump supporters trying to create a demo tape to get a cable news TV show. We're getting report on it as unbiased journalists who are supporting Trump. They interrupt then candidate Joe Biden in Iowa. My wife recently left me. Uh, she's divorcing me. What can I do to, to, to get her back? What advice could you give somebody like me to, to get her back? I'll talk to you afterwards, OK? Uh, well, could we just get this out right now? Because we're, we are, we're alive no, doing the show no, right no, now. No, we're alive. We, if we could just get, could you please answer the question? No. Can I see why your wife left you? He zinged me. He zinged me pretty bad. We speak with stars Jason Selvig and Davram Stiefler out of character. What do we want to do? We want to reopen America? Yeah. Let's reopen America! America. As COVID hit and the country shut down, they profiled increasingly frustrated Republicans. We went out there trying to say some crazy stuff in character, and then people would agree with us. You're in a cult! 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 Is there anything where you're like, wow, even we took that's, this that's far. A sex Are you asking right? if we have any shame? Q is a patriot. They talk about the growing power of the Q conspiracy, claims of election fraud, and were in Washington, D.C. during the January 6th insurrection. It was such a such an incredible and eye-opening experience to shoot. The film is executive produced by actor Michael Rappaport and supported by Midas Touch Pictures, an arm of the growing media empire of the Mycellus brothers, who we profiled often on The Issue Is. You can stream this film for free starting November 4th at thesupportersmovie.com. We hope people enjoy it. Our, you know, our blood, sweat and tears and fear and tear gas from January 6th <laughs> are, are, are in this movie. <laughs> our thanks to them and to you for watching. I'm Alex Michelson. Happy Halloween. We say goodbye with more of Derek and Dale. You're in a cult. 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 You're in a cult.